Hello, in this lecture we're going to be looking at creating a multi-instrument from scratch in the EXS24. So what this really means is that we have many different samples playing the same note. In this example I'm going to show you it will be a piano and there will be different velocities really, so different ways the piano is being played. So there's a recording of the piano being played soft, a recording of the same note again being played medium and again being played hard. So we have three different types of notes being played, a soft one, a medium, hit one and a hard one. So what we want the EXS24 to do is to trigger the different notes depending on the incoming MIDI note velocity. So say we play a chord very lightly, it will trigger a soft and if we play it hard, it will trigger the harder audio sample. So that's what I'm going to show you in this lecture. You can do this with other instruments as well, say a hi-hat, you could record a hi-hat being hit softly, a hi-hat being hit hard. So when you create a multi-instrument in the EXS24, it will trigger the different samples depending on the incoming MIDI note velocity. So let's first of all go on to software instruments and let's create EXS24. Okay, now let's click on edit and this will bring up the EXS instrument editor. So what we need to do now is actually add a new instrument. So let's go on instrument here and click new. So this is a new instrument. Now let's click on zone and here we can do a few different things. We could add the samples individually or we can load multiple samples. If we load multiple samples, this will actually save a bit of time. Sometimes EXS doesn't always get this completely right, but with a bit of tweaking, it can save a lot of time. So I'm going to click on load multiple samples. And I'm going to start off with the soft ones. So these are some samples that I actually recorded. I recorded my own piano, me playing the notes at different levels. So playing soft, medium and hard. Let's start off with soft. I only recorded one octave just for this demo, but if you're going to actually use a piano, I do recommend recording a few octaves, but of course it does depend on the part you are performing. So I'm just going to select all of these and click add here, or we could just click add all. Then I'm going to hit done. Then we get this little box here. Okay, so this one here, contiguous zones, so this will create an ascending collection of key zones starting at the chosen notes. And then we have drums. So this will create a single note range. And then above we have auto map. So auto map is for samples with different note pitches. So the EXS will try and recognize note pitches data from the samples names and assign a root name. So going back to the samples that I actually had, you'll notice they're named by the name of the note and then the octave and then the name of the sample. So it's A sharp free soft piano. So the EXS doesn't really like flat. It sees a flat as a B rather than a flat. So I do recommend using sharps rather than flats. And also good labeling can be very useful. So remember to name your sample, name the note, name the octave, and then hopefully the EXS24 should be able to map this. Then I'm going to hit OK. So I'm going to select auto map and hit OK. And you can see here, it plays the different notes in an octave. So we have zone one, C4 here, if we select this, you notice it's all of this here, so it will actually stretch this, and same with the lowest one, it will actually stretch this below. So maybe a few notes, but after this, it will transpose it and it might sound quite unnatural. So we could always find the high notes and change this so it doesn't go as high, so it won't actually play any information. Otherwise, we might be playing some really obviously transposed piano notes. We can change this for the low as well, for the low one. Drag this here, so here we go, we have an octave C3 to C4. Now if we play this back on musical typing, you'll be able to hear the different notes. Okay, so they're the soft ones, the pitch is selected, the root key, it's got it all right. So because of my labelling, it's actually done this completely fine. 
So we can rename this group to soft. And now I'm going to create a new group, and this time I'm going to import the medium ones. So these are the ones that are played at medium velocity. So I'm going to go on group now, and new group, and the same again. If we click on here, you'll notice there's no information in group three. Go to click on this, rename this med for medium, and then go on to zone, load multiple samples, the same as before. So this time I'm going to go on to medium, select all, hit done, and then go and auto map. And because the way I labeled this, it should go in just like before, I will have to drag these back. So let's find this one here. C3, let's change the key range. So there we go. And this one here, which is C4, let's change the key range here as well. Okay. So now we have, oh, let's actually delete this, create its own group. So let's uh, change this to med here. So now we have the soft group and the medium group. You can see them appear on top of each other as well. And let's go and group. New group again. And go on to zones, load multiple samples, and now I'm going to add in the hard ones. So hard piano, select all, same as before. This is quite straightforward because I labelled them correctly. If you label them correctly, it can be quite easy. If you, the label is all over the place, sometimes it won't do this. Same as before, auto map. And here we go. Let's rename this, double click, card. Okay, same as before. I'm just going to drag these back, or otherwise it might sound a little bit too fake. There we go. This one here as well. So we can select through the different samples we have here, and you can see that changes through them. If you click on all zones, it will play all these samples. Be careful though, if you do have a lot of samples, it can be quite strenuous on your CPU power. So only have a lot of samples if your computer can handle it. Another thing you can do is have a sample going over a few notes. As long as it's only a few semitones, the transposition will sound quite realistic. If you do try and transpose a note, say a fifth or an octave, it might not sound very natural, but only a few semitones, you might get away with it. So you could always do that if your computer is struggling with a lot of samples. Okay, now let's change the velocities. And the way we do that is we just go on Show Velocity. So let's start with Soft, hit Show Velocity. You'll notice it covers all the velocities here from 0 to 127. So we need to change all this. So the velocity goes from 0 to, say, maybe 30. Experiment and find the correct velocities for the sample you are playing. What you can do is select them all like this, and then just drag down. I'm going to choose 30. And now when I play softly, it will just play this soft sample. So from 0 to 30, it will play this one. Now I'm going to go to medium, and I'm going to select all these, and then it's going to start at 31, and then go to 100. And then finally hard. And to select all these, and it's going to start at 101. Finish at 127. Okay, and now when I go on all zones, you notice we have the different velocities. So this velocity here will play or trigger the soft samples. This velocity here. Let's drag this down to 100. This will trigger trigger the medium samples, and the one at the top will trigger the hard samples. So that's really how we set up multi-samples. This is great for instruments, say drums or pianos, where you really want different velocities depending on how the note is hit. So now when I play a note, if I play medium, it will pick up this medium velocity. If I change the velocity here to less than 30, it will trigger the soft. If I play the velocity more than 100, 
it will trigger the hard velocity. So this is basically how you can set up multi-samples in Logic Pro 10 with the EXS24. It can be quite straightforward. I do recommend going out and recording your own sounds. Of course, there are loads of different sample libraries, but it is quite rewarding and fun to use your own samples. But one last thing before I forget is you can always save this. So if you go to Instrument and we go to Save, you can save your instrument here. So I'm going to call it Piano 1, and this will save in the sampler instrument. And if we go back to the main interface of the EXS24, if we tweak a few of these settings, we can always save this here as well. Options, save settings to instruments. And of course, we can save this as a patch and we can save this as a channel strip setting.